Shalom children of God. Welcome back to Marie Speaks God's Grace Bible Study. This week's Jewish terminology word is, Heksher. What a wonderful Jewish terminology word for the week. Something we all have in common at some basic level, food. And the want. Or need to eat. And the desire to like what we eat. And to have the substance of what we chose to intake be at some level beneficial to oneself. Well, in Orthodox Judaism of course food and the nutriment value of the food is taken another step deeper into the spiritual realm. Oh yeah that spiritual world of what one's does and of what one chooses to or consume. Means something more than in the natural. The world in what we do, eat, and say, and think, and focus on. Not only says much about one physically, but spiritually, and now will add to this world in food. Yes, food and not just that, but. What the food or even drink one choose to intake says about them spiritually. Let us get into this week's definition and then I'll explain a little about my feelings regarding this wonderful way of Orthodox Jewish life. So how does the JPS Dictionary of Jewish Words by Joyce Eisenberg and Ellen Skinnick 2001 copyright first edition define Heksher? This is a Hebrew word pronounced, Heksher, which is an official seal of approval of kashrut on food that is issued by a mashtayak. The most common heksher on manufactured foods is the letter U in a circle, the trademark of the Union of Orthodox Jewish Congregations of America. It can also be the letter K or the word kosher. Around Pesach, foods that are Pesachdik and contain no leaven are marked with a special heksher that says kosher for Passover. A heksher can also be a certificate, such as those poster in restaurants, to assure diner that the food served therein is kosher. Why is kosher food a thing and where did it come from? Kashrut's Biblical and Talmudic Origins Close readers of the Torah might notice that according to the book of Genesis, vegetarianism was commanded by God as the ideal diet, see Genesis 1.29. However, in the course of the biblical narratives, this changed to include a variety of different animals. According to the Torah, Leviticus 11, only certain kinds of animals are considered inherently kosher. For land animals, any creature that both chews its cud and has split hooves is kosher, for sea creatures, any fish that has both fins and scales is acceptable, and for birds, only those birds approved by the Torah, or others that later authorities have judged to be like them, a list that excludes scavengers and birds of prey. In addition, it is repeated three times in the Torah that it is forbidden to cook a baby goat in its own mother's milk. What is a mashjayak? Mashjayak, mashjayak, is Hebrew for supervisor. A mashjayak can refer to either a the agent of a kosher supervising organization, who ensures that food is produced according to the kosher requirements, or b, the rabbi who is responsible for the performance and well-being of yeshiva students. What does a kosher supervisor do? A mashjayak may supervise a restaurant, catering facility, factory or even several factories. The mashjayak ensures that everything purported to be kosher is indeed kosher. If the food being produced will be certified as kosher for Passover, the mashjayak will be checking for that as well. In some facilities, the mashjayak's focus may be on checking labels on everything entering a plant. Often, the mashjayak also checks eggs to ensure that they have no blood spots, and leafy greens to ensure that they are bug-free. Now if you're not nauseous and ready for more, here is a second helping on this Jewish terminology word of the week. Ha 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 ha. I think many of us can agree that when we eat healthy food, we feel and look healthy. In this understanding, one is more likely to have a healthier body and be able to live a more satisfied long life if one is taking in healthier foods and drinks. Not suffering sickness, illness, and or disease that many of their counterparts do that chose to not only engage in unhealthy food or drink practices, can be a motivating force for many of us. Well, another case may also be said as, what may be deemed by nutritional sources or risk statistics sources to be unhealthy can include, risky habits or addictions such as, smoking or drinking and eating over processed goods and or liquids. Especially in excess. Now, don't get me wrong I do like sweets. Especially, cake, mm yes. Fun fact, my favorite cake is Trace Lay Chase. I have it every birthday. Which is coming up soon. Hashtag thank you Hashem for another year of life. And another chance to eat. Trace Lay Chase Cake. Homemade Trace Leches Cake Recipe So let's unpack the goodness both spiritually and naturally of Hexar. What are some Hexar symbols? 
A wonderful article and list of products, I found that may help others understand that the ingredients in food matters as to determining if something is kosher or unkosher. One may be shocked to find that things are not always as they seem with what we are sold in stores. Knowledge is power and sometimes upsetting, when one looks at what we are sold here in the US for a praying to Hashem that soon this will all be changed for His honor and glory. Amen and Amen. Clean and Unclean Food Products List While I am learning the laws of kosher, I have my own personal battles. One might think I battle with the letting go of unclean foods, nope, I honestly could care less about eating any pork or shrimp or anything else unclean. It's too much work to clean and research others might suggest, nope, I honestly enjoy the separating or dishes and wear. Learning how to make some kashrut. I love, cleaning and organizing a kosher kitchen. I love cleaning foods and drying and researching. I am obviously so much fun. Laugh out loud. I'm not perfect about it, but when I learn something new, I get more and more excited to live out what I have learned. So what could possibly be my dilemma? Kosher and healthy versus kosher and unhealthy? Now this is fully my own personally fight within myself. I used to be almost 300 pounds. I also had a short scare of cancer years ago. So my health is on my mind often. I want to do good and be here long enough to see God's blessings unfold. To be here for all God's blessings I believe I have a duty to do my part and be better tomorrow than I am today. After going from a military way of life or fitness and many times fitness programs that have left some long-term damage to my body. To almost 300 pounds. It took some time to get to a size I feel good about myself and appearance. And maintain my health and appearance in a godly manner that is not destructive to this body merciful Hashem has given me. This being said I have an emotional application to my personal choice in maintaining a kosher food and drink orthodox Jewish, religious, lifestyle. Let me try and explain now all that has been said. I believe when I read the book of Leviticus and the verse speak about what is clean or unclean the verse can also be applied to, what make this body function in the best possible manner for Ha. Shem. Just because something is obtainable or edible and labeled kosher. Does not mean healthy. There are a lot of rabbinical laws and teaching and reasoning that goes into this, but somehow a candy bar can be kosher, or alcoholic beverage, or even a drug. This does not mean in any way shape or form that the over or excessive consumption of that item may not be detrimental to one's physical or spiritual health. As far as quality of nutrients it contains, including protein and a wide array of vitamins, minerals and antioxidants. Now, I am not expert. But I am going to guess that some properly washed, inspected for bugs, and prepared veggies, home cooked meat, and a grain is going to be far more beneficial to my spiritual and physical health. Then a fast food, kosher even, or even restaurant meal, kosher even. Especially if those establishments uses several, kosher, chemically treated or over-processed foods, that have to be stored or made with chemical preservative and cancer causes dyes. I follow our great rabbinical laws and suggest for the koshering laws, but I stay away from what I know looks tasty, but would affect me greatly in a negative manner. That is all I am saying. Why am I saying what I am saying? I think many of us need to take a look at just because something is lawful, by man, and allowed, religious observance or free will, doesn't mean we need to go crazy on it. CBD, medications, chips, coffee, cake, sodas. This can be applied to anything we chose to intake. We, in my opinion, should remember not to make food or drink a substitute for God's comfort, but also remember part of that garden we are ordered by God bless be he almighty one, to maintain. Is our body he formed from the clay or earth for us those are just my thoughts but i will get off my box of lecture now another biblical feast is coming up additional fun times in planning and a little about our jewish history when is the next pesach when is passover passover 2023 will be celebrated from april 5th to april 13th the first seder will be on april 5th after nightfall and the second Seder will be on April 6th after nightfall. Passover is celebrated by eating matzah, unleavened bread and mar, bitter herbs. For the duration of the eight, or seven days in Israel, of Passover, which celebrates the emancipation of the Hebrews from Egyptian slavery, kamitz, leaven, is strictly avoided. What is Passover? 
The eight-day Jewish holiday of Passover is celebrated in the early spring, from the 15th through the 22nd of the Hebrew month of Nisan, April 5th to 13th, 2023. Passover, Pesach, commemorates the emancipation of the Israelites from slavery in ancient Egypt. Pesach is observed by avoiding leaven, and highlighted by the Seder meals that include four cups of wine, eating matzah and bitter herbs, and retelling the story of the Exodus. In Hebrew it is known as Pesach, which means to pass over, because G.D. passed over the Jewish homes when killing the Egyptian firstborn on the very first Passover Eve. For those who would like to research and study further on Heksher, I have some links below to share. Eating Kosher for Beginners What is Kosher? Kosher Symbols, Explained Ask the Rabbi, QA number 343 Can you swallow gel caps? Are they kosher and other kasherous issues? How to clean and remove pesticides from your fruits and vegetables? Hashtag thank you. Ha! Shem. For it is written. In. Leviticus chapter 11 JPS version. Spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying to them. Speak to the Israelite people thus, these are the creatures that you may eat from among all the land animals. Any animal that has true hoofs, with clefts through the hoofs, and that chews the cud, such you may eat. The following, however, of those that either chew the cud or have true hoofs, you shall not eat, the camel, although it chews the cud, it has no true hoofs, it is impure for you. The daman, although it chews the cud, it has no true hoofs, it is impure for you. The hare, although it chews the cud, it has no true hoofs, it is impure for you. And the swine, although it has true hoofs, with the hoofs cleft through, it does not chew the cud, it is impure for you. You shall not eat of their flesh or touch their carcasses, they are impure for you. These you may eat of all that live in water, anything in water, whether in the seas or in the streams, that has fins and scales, these you may eat. But anything in the seas or in the streams that has no fins and scales, among all the swarming things of the water and among all the other living creatures that are in the water, they are an abomination for you. And an abomination for you they shall remain, you shall not eat of their flesh and you shall abominate their carcasses. Everything in water that has no fins and scales shall be an abomination for you. The following you shall abominate among the birds, they shall not be eaten, they are an abomination, the eagle, the vulture, and the black vulture. The kite, falcons of every variety. All varieties of raven. The ostrich, the nighthawk, the sea gull, hawks of every variety. The little owl, the cormorant, and the great owl. The white owl, the pelican, and the bustard. The stork, herons of every variety, the hoopoe, and the bat. All wing swarming things that walk on fours shall be an abomination for you. But these you may eat among all the wing swarming things that walk on fours, all that have, up their feet, jointed legs to leap with on the ground. Of these you may eat the following, locusts of every variety, all varieties of bald locust, crickets of every variety, and all varieties of grasshopper. But all other winged swarming things that have four legs shall be an abomination for you. And the following shall make you impure, whoever touches their carcasses shall be impure until evening. And whoever carries the carcasses of any of them shall wash those clothes and be impure until evening. Every animal that has true hoofs but without clefts through the hoofs, or that does not chew the cud. They are impure for you, whoever touches them shall be impure. Also all animals that walk on paws, among those that walk on fours, are impure for you, whoever touches their carcasses shall be impure until evening. And anyone who carries their carcasses shall wash those clothes and remain impure until evening. They are impure for you. The following shall be impure for you from among the things that swarm on the earth, the mole, the mouse, and great lizards of every variety. The gecko, the land crocodile, the lizard, the sand lizard, and the chameleon. Those are for you the impure among all the swarming things, whoever touches them when they are dead shall be impure until evening. And anything on which one of them falls when dead shall be impure, be it any article of wood, or a cloth, or a skin, or a sack, any such article that can be put to use shall be dipped in water, and it shall remain impure until evening, then it shall be pure. And if any of those falls into an earthen vessel, everything inside it shall be impure and the vessel itself you shall break. As to any food that may be eaten, it shall become impure if it came in contact with water. As to any liquid that may be drunk, it shall become impure if it was inside any vessel. 
everything on which the carcass of any of them falls shall be impure, an oven or stove shall be smashed. They are impure, and impure they shall remain for you. However, a spring or cistern in which water is collected shall be pure, but whoever touches such a carcass in it shall be impure. If such a carcass falls upon seed grain that is to be sown, it is pure. But if water is put on the seed and any part of a carcass falls upon it, it shall be impure for you. If an animal that you may eat has died, anyone who touches its carcass shall be impure until evening. Anyone who eats of its carcass shall wash those clothes and remain impure until evening, and anyone who carries its carcass shall wash those clothes and remain impure until evening. All the things that swarm upon the earth are an abomination, they shall not be eaten. You shall not eat, among all things that swarm upon the earth, anything that crawls on its belly, or anything that walks on fours, or anything that has many legs, for they are an abomination. You shall not draw abomination upon yourselves through anything that swarms, you shall not make yourselves impure therewith and thus become impure. For I am your God, you shall sanctify yourselves and be holy, for I am holy. You shall not make yourselves impure through any swarming thing that moves upon the earth. For I am the one who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God, you shall be holy, for I am holy. These are the instructions concerning animals, birds, all living creatures that move in water, and all creatures that swarm on earth. For distinguishing between the impure and the pure, between the living things that may be eaten and the living things that may not be eaten. How beautiful are those words from our Father! I love how much our God cares for us. How beautiful our portion, how pleasant our lot. Hashtag thank you. Ha. Shim. This week's word was selected at random from my personally owned the JPS Dictionary of Jewish Words by Joyce Eisenberg and Ellen Skinnick 2001 Copyright First Edition. I'm not paid to endorse nor affiliated. This book is from my personal library. I purchased this book from thriftbooks.com you can get your own personal low price copy using the link below. thriftbook.com Remember to keep up to date with us via our website at Marie Speaks God's Grace.live for all our blog and social media links. Season 5 of the Bible study has returned. Woo! Whoa! Please feel free to catch up on the Bible studies and other videos we have uploaded on YouTube and rumble. Shalom children of God. Welcome back to Marie Speaks God's Grace Bible Study. This week's Jewish terminology word is, nita pronounced, nita. This is a Hebrew word regarding the Jewish laws relating to menstruation and martial relations. Also see Taharat HaMishpacha. So like, heart, rumble, subscribe and or share for next class. Until next time, with God's beautiful mercy and grace we will see each other soon. With love. Marie. Disclaimer, sources and resources have been hyperlinked in blog for an easier reading during podcast.